So throughout the last tutorials, I already showed you how to code a lot of different movement abilities in both first and third person. But one thing that's still missing is a nice and clean dash ability that feels great to use. So today I'm going over all of these points and show you how to code exactly that. And if this looks complicated to you, no worries, we're going to approach this step by step so you'll understand it easily. As a base for player movement, you either need to follow along with these two tutorials first, or if you are already a more experienced coder, then you can of course use your own movement code, but the easiest way is to just use the one I created. Okay, so open up a new script, call it dashing, and we'll start by creating the variables. First, you're going to need references to the orientation, the player cam, the rigid body, and your player movement script. Then let's create floats for the dash forward and dash upward force, and also a float to define the dash duration. And you're also going to need floats for the dash cooldown and dash cooldown timer. And last but not least, let's choose a key code for dashing. For me, that's going to be E. Now in void start, you can quickly assign the rigid body and movement script references using get component. Okay, and now create a function called dash and one called reset dash. Now inside of the dash function, let's calculate the dash force that you want to apply. And as promised, we're going to make this more complex later, but for now just use orientation.forward times the dash force and orientation.up times the dash upward force. Then you can simply add this force by using rigidbody.addForce and forcemode.impulse. Now you also want to stop the dash at some point, so invoke the reset dash function with the dash duration as delay. Currently this function doesn't do anything, but we'll get there in a second. Now to test it out, just call the dash function in void update whenever you press the dash key. And if you now head over to Unity, assign all of the references, set the values to something like this and hit play, you can now press the dash key and the force gets added. But the player is still moving really slow. This is because so far, the max speed of the player movement script is not increasing. So head over to your movement script, add a float for the dash speed, a new state called dashing and a bool with the same name. Now inside of your state handler, you can just add a new state called dashing and apply the dash speed. Also go back to your dash function, set the dashing bool of the movement script to true and then in reset dash to false again. And then there's one little problem we need to account for, because sometimes the force gets added before the movement script switches to the dashing mode, so you want to wait a little bit before adding the dash force. And we'll do this with a simple delay dash force function and then calling this function with invoke. Also, let's quickly implement the cooldown. So inside of the dash function, if the cooldown timer is above zero, that means the cooldown is still active and you can't dash, so return the function. Otherwise, just start the timer and execute the dash. Also, in void update, if the timer is above zero, just count it down. If you now go back to Unity, set the values to something like this and hit play, you can now press your dash key to add a bit of forward force. However, to achieve a great dash ability, there's still a lot missing. One thing would be that currently, after you finish the dash, the velocity instantly drops from 20 to 7, which feels like you just bumped into a wall. So let's keep the momentum of the dash for a bit longer. Now I already showed you how to implement momentum in the sliding tutorial, so I'm going to do it in a similar way here. First, create a float for your desired move speed. Then you want to have variables to store the desired move speed and state of the last frame. And also a bool called keep momentum. And from now on, you're not changing the move speed directly anymore. Instead, just use desired move speed. And also in the air state, make sure that you set desired move speed to either your walk or sprint speed. 
Now at the end of the state handler, just save the last desired move speed and the last state. Because then you can check whether the desired move speed has changed by comparing it to the last desired move speed. And now remember what we're trying to do. We want to keep the momentum after dashing. So if the last movement state was dashing, then keep momentum should be true. And the rest is quite simple. You just check if the desired move speed has changed. And if it did, you either want to keep the momentum or not. And if you don't want to keep it, just set the move speed to your desired move speed. Which means the speed changes instantly. And keeping the momentum just means smoothly transitioning to the desired move speed. For this, we're going to use math.lerp inside of a coroutine. If you've never done this before, just look it up in the Unity documentation. But basically, this function is just smoothly going to change the move speed to the desired move speed. And the higher the speed change factor is, the faster it changes. And with that set up, you can just start this coroutine whenever you want to keep the momentum. Just make sure that the previous coroutine gets stopped before starting a new one. You can now create a float for the dash speed change factor and apply it whenever you're in the dashing state. Now head back to Unity, set the factor to something like 50 and now you can see that the speed smoothly transitions back to normal after dashing. Okay, so dashing feels a lot better now, but it's still a really unflexible ability. So let's enable the player to dash into any direction he wants and code some extra settings. So go back to your dashing script and add these spools to allow for a lot more flexibility. And I'm going to explain them as we use them. First, let's choose if we want to use the player cam or the orientation as forward transform. And now let's create a little function where we get the direction based on the inputs. And this function is going to take in the forward transform we just selected. So first, get the movement inputs of the player like this. Then create a vector free to store the calculated direction. And if all directions are allowed, you can use the forward direction times the vertical input and the right direction times the horizontal input. This will allow you to dash in 8 different directions depending on which keys you're pressing. But if those directions are not allowed, you just use the forward direction. And also if you're not pressing any keys, you want to use the forward direction as well. Then just return the normalized direction and that's it. Now you can call this function and then when you calculate the force, just use the direction instead of orientation.forward. And if you want more control when dashing, it's a good idea to deactivate the gravity while dashing. Just remember to turn it back on again in the reset dash function. And you might remember that in the slope movement tutorial, we turned off the gravity while on a slope, which collides with the use gravity statement that we just made. And I know there's cleaner ways to fix this, but for now just return the move player function while dashing. And that's gonna work fine. Now there's one setting left, which is resetting the velocity before dashing. So apply this in the delay dash force function. Ok, now let's assign all of the references and use these settings to try them out. You can now dash in any direction you want and it generally feels a lot cleaner. However, if you use the camera as forward direction and use a higher dash force, yeah, it's quite extreme. This is because in the movement script, you're only limiting the x and z velocity so far. So quickly create a float for the max y speed and then inside of the speed control function if the max y speed is not zero and the rigid body's y velocity is exceeding the maximum just limit it back to the max y speed. Then inside of the dash script you can just create a float for the max dash y speed and then apply this limit when you start dashing and remove it again when the dash is over. Back in Unity, you can set the max dash y speed to something like this and when you try it out again, it works just fine. And now there's one extra element that you can add to make this dash feel even better, which is a simple FOV change. So go to your camera script and create a function called doFOV, which takes in a float. 
then you can just get the camera component and set the FOV. But now it's changing instantly. If you want a smooth change, however, import the doTween asset, add using dg.tweening at the top of your script, and then you can use the do field of view function. This will then cause the camera to smoothly transition to the new FOE within 0.25 seconds. In your dashing script, reference the player cam script and create a float for the FOV while dashing. Then you can use the function you just created to set the FOV at the start of the dash and reset it back to normal when you reset the dash. For me that would be 85. Ok, assign the value, hit play and congrats you just created an awesome dashing ability. As always you can download this entire project file over my discord server to see exactly how I set everything up. But now thank you so much for watching, if this video has helped you in any way, make sure to like it in return and don't forget to subscribe for more awesome tutorials. See you next time!